Hey guys, I recently got into medical school, which I'm obviously super duper stoked on. I can't tell you how stoked I am and how much time and work it took to do that. And I just wanna let you know that you guys can do it too. And I'm gonna show you guys my application in the hopes that some of it will help you get into medical school. And maybe I'll throw out some tips on the way that will really change the way that you're attempting to get in. And maybe, you know, at whatever stage you are, I'll have some advice for you. So thanks for coming to my channel, like, and subscribe, and let's get to this video. Okay, so starting out at the beginning here, we have my first page. Brian Patrick Young is my name, and I blacked out all that information. I was living in Santa Cruz, going to UC Santa Cruz at the time, um, so that's where I did my undergrad. Um, but honestly, if you do super well in your classes, I don't think it really matters what uh, school you come from. Uh, I've seen people get go from UC Santa Cruz and the, the, the finest academic institutions, and people from all over get into all over, so don't be worrying about it too much. Um, here we come down to different languages. So on MSAR, one can see that those who have a high level of proficiency in a secondary language oftentimes are able to get into schools a lot easier. So I would recommend, especially if you're early in your application, um, application cycle, your medical journey, that you get some proficiency in another language. So I put good for Spanish. I kind of wish I put advanced. However, I've also heard some, uh, I guess you could call it uh, like rumors that people who put down a certain level of proficiency when they're making their application, uh, if they put down like they're advanced or fluent, sometimes somebody will start speaking to them in that language or they'll want some form of proof, which totally makes sense. So um, yeah, so get some proficiency in another language. It's also just like super beautiful to be able to communicate with people in their own language. Um, so that is one thing that I wish I would have done differently. I would have done a major that included a language as part of it. So for you guys really early on in your cycles and your in your journey, I would suggest trying to get some language classes in there, into there. Um, so my childhood information, guys, I came from a home that really struggled financially. My parents had four boys. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I can't. My mom was uh, 25 when she had her first boy. And then boy, 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 poor thing. Anyway, so it was a struggle growing up. I did put down that I was a disadvantage because of that, because I feel like it contextualized my application a little bit. For everybody out there who's applying that does, doesn't come from, you know, like a super financially adept family or from a super educationally adept family, I relate to you and I just want you to know you can do it. You can absolutely do it. All right. And please reach out to me in the comments if you want to tell me about that or you have questions about that too. But yeah, we're always worried about losing our house and stuff like that. And it was terrible. Absolutely. Just not a good environment to to have to grow up in with regards to that. I do love my parents though. They did a, they did a good job of raising me and my Humble opinion, so moving on here, um, let's see, chugga chugga chugga, got my brother's ages there, and then skipping past that, I don't have any military discharges or any of that jazz, now we're getting down into my grades. Okay, so my grades, guys, so um, during my freshman year, I wasn't really sure that I wanted to become a doctor, in high school I wanted to, and then I got into college, and then I was like, wait, Maybe doctors are super stressed out all the time and suffer a lot of burnout and stuff like that. So I kind of started to get away from it. Um, also, pre-calculus, boom. You can see you got a big old C right there. Um, so I was kind of, I wasn't like the best students, you, you know, you see Bs and you see my C right there. So obviously I was kind of at a point where I wasn't really dedicating myself to my studies too much. Um, Freshman year of college is really, really entertaining. Uh, there's a lot of different social things to get into and get up to, and it's fun, and I'll never forget all those really fun memories, but at the same time, wish I didn't get a C in pre-calculus. That was a mistake. Um, and I think that I probably wouldn't have ended up doing that should I have sought out the proper resources, the proper resources, including peer tutoring. So check out some peer tutoring, guys. So continuing to move here, we get another second part of my application and you see that I really picked things up here because I saw my dream as a doctor starting to slip away once I got that C. And I knew if I continued down that road, it would be much, much, much more difficult to get into medical school. So I really picked up things and I started getting more A's, which is great and felt good. And then I got in my junior year and started to finish out strong. But guys, I will point out something in my application that is really gonna help you should you be a little bit earlier in your medical school journey. And that thing that I'm gonna point out to you is meow, 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 this thing right here, Chem 199 tutorial. 
And you'll see that's a five unit class that I got an A plus in. And you may be thinking to yourself, boop, this is it. You may be thinking to yourself, oh man, like what the heck, what the heck is that? Just this tutorial. What that is, is my research lab. So a lot of the times at university and colleges, you can actually ask your professor, your PI or your faculty advisor regarding getting a class for your research. I mean, we all know that in order to get into medical school, a lot of schools expect you to have research experience, especially if you're studying the MSAR, stati MSAR statistics, which you should, of course. Um, I mean, we're not a statistic, but we all take statistics. So we understand the importance of some of these things, right? Um, like everybody's journey is unique, but I mean, understanding things at a scientific level is not something that everybody's gonna get just from doing academic research, but I'd say it really helps me get an idea about it. Um, but then again, everybody has a unique experience. Back to this though. So I was able to get that approved as an actual class, which I think you should. I mean, all of these research institutions are getting free work from undergrads. It's only fair that we get something back. So I think because we're learning all these skills, having it be an actual legitimized class is important. So that brought up my GPA too, which is, um, you know, obviously pretty cool for me. So check that out, guys. Talk to your professor that you might be doing research with. And if you're not doing research with the professor yet and you want to know how to get into it, let me know. We can, we can do a video or I can, you know, send you some messages with regards to that. Um, yeah, guys, so I took a lot. I didn't take any languages, like I said. I wish I had. That would be the thing that I would probably have changed should I be able to change something during this journey. Um, continuing on the line here. So my major was molecular cell and developmental biology, which they need to shorten to something smaller than that we call it mcd bio but you could pro i just tell people it's molecular biology and this doesn't really matter but either way so that was my major um yeah so guys so my freshman year gpa was a 3.56 not that beautiful but because i picked it up my junior and sophomore year um and senior year you know it, it definitely helped out again with the help of those tutorial classes um just you know like on a social aspect I was the guy on, in on Friday and Saturday nights, and you may be looking at me thinking that's not surprising, Brian, but that's the truth. Okay, here we go, MCAT exam scores. So on my MCAT, I got a 516. I did this in the dead of the pandemic, which was woof. I studied for six months because my exam was canceled for like three months or four months in a row or something, and I couldn't have had something better happen to me. Like studying for a total of six months on that exam from five to eight hours every day, was super important, it really helped me out. Um, I think I use the Kaplan prep books, but I'll do a little video describing that in the future. Um, and cars, cars really got me. Of course, cars got me, cars gets everybody. Um, but I did see a lot of improvement, though that's an 82 percentile rank score. I definitely improved over time from having done that multiple times. So don't give up on cars. I know it seems like uh, it's something like that, that one is just innately born with, but I promise you, if you just study, 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 study that stuff, It'll, you'll get better at it. Um, okay, continuing down the line here, we're gonna get into the different things I did with regards to my extracurricular activities. The first thing I did was, or at least the first thing I wrote down was my international medical volunteering in Nicaragua. So much fun. If you guys get an opportunity to do some international volunteering, then do it. And the way I did this was actually really independently, guys. I didn't do this with any organization. I was just got in contact with one of these remote clinics in Nicaragua. And I would, you know, if you're interested in volunteering there, I would reach out to them and volunteer with them. They're a really wonderful organization. Um, it's uh, the Roberto Clemente Clinic. That's actually a misspelling there. So another mistake, the Roberto Clemente Health Clinic in Nicaragua. So, so, so beautiful. Um, they really help a lot of people in need. They do ask for a little bit of a donation. It's like 200 bucks, which like nobody likes to pay money. But at the same time, when you see the services that they provide, you'd be absolutely willing to pay the $200 to volunteer there. And again, I volunteered there for a month. Living there is like $10 a day. I'm not gonna sell you on Nicaragua. This is not about that, but you should go to Nicaragua. I did some biotechnology research after I got out of my undergrad. Um, some people, you know, I was really worried about it because I wasn't sure if doing biotech was something that med schools would want to see. I, I figured, you know what, they probably just want to see clinical stuff. But at the end of the day, they actually, you know, it gave a really interesting thing for me to talk about because at the end of the day, we care about science, right? I mean, like scientific investigations is how we actually achieve like significant developments within our field. So a lot of the doctors I ended up talking to during my interviews, and I interviewed at 
three places. I interviewed at the University of Iowa, uh, the Carver College of Medicine, University of Rochester, and the Quinnipiac School. And then I was invited to interview at a Californian school called like the California something or another of health sciences. And I denied them. And that felt really good to deny medical school after all the medical schools that denied me. So if you get the opportunity to do that, take it. It feels good. Um, all right, continuing down in my application. So we get down to volunteering with the visually impaired. So I spent a lot of time volunteering with the visually impaired and I would suggest you volunteer with some form of at-risk population, um, just so you get a better idea of what it's like to live with certain disabilities within our society, especially seeing people with visual impairments. I think it gave me a really good idea of what it's like to function with different disabilities in our society. Um, and it, it humbled me in, in a big way, and it also inspired me to try and become uh, an ophthalmic surgeon, which is a plan, and we'll see if that ends up being the thing after I start school and really get into it. But yeah, so that's a little bit of the story there um, of, of, you know, just help people I was able to help that, especially during the, you know, the height of the pandemic, but a lot of it is honestly just talking to people and making sure they have a friend, you know, it's not like super medical or anything like that, but it's really, really fun. Um, reading people's mail for them and stuff like that. I worked as an ophthalmic assistant in cataract surgery and, and people, I would definitely go ahead and check that out. If you get the opportunity, I would go ahead and I would check out becoming an ophthalmic uh, assistant in cataract surgery. And the question is why? And the answer is because it's something you could do that you don't need any form of like actual qualification really to do, but it's super medical and you can actually, you can't really participate in surgery, but you get to observe surgeries and you get to help people right before their surgeries, right? You get to take care of them right after their surgeries. Um, and it's also just so, so, so satisfying. When people come in for cataract surgeries, they come in, they can't see, they can't see colors, they can't see clearly, and boom, they get a procedure, takes like 15 minutes, and in two days, they're seeing better than they did when they're like 24 years old. And that is so beautiful to see. So check that out, guys. Honestly, becoming an ophthalmic assistant, you get paid so bad. But at the same time, you're getting paid. You're not like doing some form of like internship, which is just robbing somebody of their work, in my opinion, 90% of the time. You're actually getting paid for your work and you're learning a lot. And also, if you do want to become an ophthalmologist, like it's going to help you down the line to have done that and yada, 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 yada. Hit me up if you want to talk about that too. Artistic endeavors, bonsai gardening. I became part of the Santa Cruz bonsai community and I was actually on the board for a little bit, which is super ridiculously cool. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of a, a weird thing I like to do. Um, I got highest honors in the major cause I got above a 3.8. Um, I know a lot of people like, yeah, I worked hard for that. I'm proud of that. Um, and I would throw that on your application if you got something like that too. I worked at Midtown Optometry as an ophthalmic uh, assistant and a retinal technician, and that's when I wasn't really sure about going into medicine. So I kind of strayed from my initial path of going into medicine for a little bit. And I talked about that candidly with the people who were interviewing me, and they appreciated that. You know, I wanted to get up, become a doctor for a long time, but when I saw how much, you know, there's burnout and depression and, um, and, and you know, a lot of different... Um, how can you say like fi fi financial incentives that maybe shouldn't be there for our doctors, which made me kind of uncomfortable, you know, when the doctor rolls up and they're like super shiny BMW and like all the medical assistants are rolling in and they're like old Corollas or something. It's like, this is not how the system should work. And I, I don't know, that's, that's, that's a different video. But at the end of the day, I kind of strayed from the path of medicine because of that. Did optometry for a bit and I was like, you know what? Optometry is cool, but it's really, really, really about making money, selling glasses and stuff. Uh, that's how most optometrists make most of their money. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna check out surgery um, and getting into surgery, like I had said, I really found my home there. Um, so just keep trying stuff, guys. If you're feeling doubt, then try something else, especially, you know, you have a lot of time, like there's no real time limit or like strict thing that you're trying to get through in life. Like just do what makes you, like what makes you feel comfortable in your heart. Um, and things will work out. Okay, guys, so I got some research scholarships here. My uh, PI that I was working with during undergrad um, suggested I do a couple different things. Uh, I was doing research on environmental stuff, so it wasn't even health-related, really. It was like environmental toxicity of mercury compounds in like plants and different types of animals, so it had very little to do with actual, like, it had nothing to do with any clinical medicine, but still, again, 
people found it interesting. I got to talk to my people, like uh, the interviewers about it too. So do your thing, do something that you think is fun and cool. And yeah, guys, and you could get paid to do it again. The family I came from didn't have too much money. So at the end of the day, getting those research scholarships was super, super, super helpful too. So ask your PI about that or like try again to a research lab. If you need help getting into a research lab, let me know. I can do a video on that too. I did a bit of emergency medical club, medical club membership. That was super simple, super easy. It was kind of just meeting up like once a week after school. Um, there's my research experience. I wrote a tiny bit about that. And then surfing, I'm a super obnoxious surfer, guys. I'm wearing a surfer shirt right now. My surfing is in whatever, like all over my channel. You can see it everywhere. I would like to apologize about that. But I would also like to say, find something you're physically interested in. And, and I suggest you do it like something that challenges you because I think there are, there's a, a, a lot of research that suggests that having something that gets you physically stimulated is going to help you with your brain development as well. I think like the development of human chori chorionic growth factor, I don't know, just somebody correct me on what I'm trying to say, but I think we all know that like the amount of endorphins that you're getting, you know, the, the uh, I haven't gone to medical school yet, don't listen to me at all, but I do know that a lot of the uh, like joint capsules don't have any proper vascularization. And the only way that you're actually going to exchange nutrients within those joint capsules is going to be through physical exercise. So your body's literally going to start atrophying if you don't give yourself some actual physical stimulation. So get out there and do something that physically stimulates you guys. Um, I think, I mean, like from the time that I started, you know, surfing consistently and I actually started working out, my grades went up too, and I was doing nothing more. I wasn't even studying more. I was literally surfing more. I don't know, it's cool. Okay, and then my physician shadowing experience. So guys, my physician's shadowing experience was kind of unique because in shadowing, I kind of saw how doctors have a really hard time and they, like emotionally, it's very, very difficult. And that's what actually originally led me to stray from the path of becoming a doctor and to go check out other fields. I was in it for a long time, but when I saw that the, this, this doctor I was working with was having such a difficult you know, time emotionally, and he was kind of struggling with like the emotion of his patients, and you know, just very empathetic, very, very sweet person. But at the same time, in seeing that, it kind of scared me a little bit. So I don't know, kind of added a chapter to the journey. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's not a, like a, it's not a bad thing. It's not a, it, it just adds a chapter to the journey, you know? So yeah, and then some just volunteer experience when I was young, getting into volunteering with people with visual impairments. And then I got my personal statement here. Guys, I'm gonna do that in a separate video because this is long and boring and I don't wanna make you cry here, it'd just be sad. So we're gonna skip past that and we're gonna get straight into my experiences here with, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My experiences here with applying. So I applied to a ton of different places, guys. So I would like to just say, um, apply to like 30 schools. That's in my opinion, you know, everybody's different, but if you can get into the cycle early and apply to like 30 schools or something, like get it in, like get 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 it in get your application in early make sure it's high quality and then start writing your secondaries before they come out all secondaries are posted online and this is something i had uh i had a friend a while ago a close friend and when she was applying to medical school before before my application she didn't know that everybody writes their secondaries way before the secondaries are ever published so guys if you don't know that you gotta jump on that you gotta write your secondaries way before they come out and how do you do that you just go ahead and you search online oh like all oh, medical school secondaries for like 20 whatever and they repeat you could go through years and you'll see these schools are repeating 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 because they recognize that the only way that a student is physically capable of applying to enough schools to have a statistical chance of getting in is by starting before the secondaries come out so just pre-write your secondaries when the secondaries come out you're going to receive a lot of them that are not the same and then all you have to do is rewrite the ones that are not the same it also gets you really good at writing too so by writing like 31, 35, 30, whatever secondaries, you are really improving your writing skill. Highly recommend. Okay guys, so I applied to MPH programs. Most of them didn't uh, require a, like a second essay. Some of them did require a second essay. Um, yeah, so that is, yeah guys, that, that's, that's pretty much it. So please hit me up if you have any questions on the matter. I would love to talk to you guys more about it and I appreciate you coming on my channel. Please like, please subscribe. Um, and yeah, more videos to come. All the best, guys. Have a great day.